In this video cast, Michael Hamlin, Chief Security Architect of Tufin Technologies, a corporation which focuses on the correct configuration and management of firewalls, will discuss the various vendor offerings available today. It's actually interesting. Some of the firewall vendors have taken very different um, directions in how they're going to process packets. No more are we looking at just the basic ACL designs 10 years ago we saw for, for, for routers and switches, right? We have Palo Alto Networks doing very deep application um, processing of packets, um, application inside of the protocol. So in other words, it's not just HTTP, and it's not just going to Google, but it's a Google Doc, and it's a Google Doc spreadsheet. And you can write a rule around users who can use spreadsheets versus um, documents versus Google Chat. And I, and I understand that, for example, if a corporation wants to allow a Facebook, for example, within their, their environment, that they can say, okay, we'll allow these Facebook applications, but not these other untrusted Facebook applications. Correct. So you can kind of uh, whitelist and blacklist at the application level inside of the, the website you're looking at, is one of their techniques. Um, and the other vendors, you're, you, see them, you see lots of other different integrations. It seems like each of the vendors are starting to find their own direction where they're going to focus. So, so tell me about the Fortinet so, offering. So Fortinet uh, has scaled up their product and they've, they've scaled across that. I mean, they now have central management servers, lots of different uh, features. One of the unique things our customers like that they tell me about is they can add their application profiles on a rule. So if they want to add deep inspection, they can actually write a rule for which part of their network they want deep inspection. So instead of doing deep inspection of web traffic on all their networks, they can do it just for the untrusted user segments. So, so can you give us a, a, an example of this deep inspection? Sure, so like they can do, when they do their SQL protections, instead of having to apply that to the whole rule base to look for attacks on a website or look for um, attacks that would be attacking users' browsers, they can write, you can specifically carve out your rule base so that most of your traffic that doesn't need that protection can pass ahead of that rule. And for example, you can write a rule that lets all of your DMZ traffic that doesn't have web services come in first, and then write a rule to your services that would have SQL databases behind them, and apply that profile for SQL protection to that rule, which balances the performance versus protection aspect of every firewall. And what about the the uh, the leaders? Uh, how are they doing, do you think? You know, the watch guards and the Cisco's. Uh... Right. So the, I think the, the three leaders are still Cisco, Juniper, and Checkpoint, of course, right? Okay, yeah. And Checkpoint released their new Blade architecture this year, which allows you to, to pick and modularize the software, so the different types of enforcement. They added IPS and DLP, so intrusion prevention and data leakage protection into the firewall suite. Uh, more of the advanced UTM function in the, core, in the enterprise firewall. And you can pick and match those those features into your blade licensing scheme. So and, and give them more money. Right, of course. <laughs> See, everything's about generating more revenue, right? So we're going to buy more modules. Um, we have uh, that ability to to work in that blade architecture now in the checkpoint world. And they bought um, um, they bought an application uh, profiling company that they've added to their suite, so they can start doing application uh, identification and inspection like uh, the Palo Alto firewalls. The Juniper team has consolidated their routing, switching, and firewall platform. Um, originally, most of the Juniper firewalls came from the NetScreen acquisition years ago, and they've consolidated from that operating system to their Juno OS, which runs their routers and switches to try and build. Now they're building their unified appliances, um, which is giving them synergy in their development teams. Does that mean that uh, if I'm in Juniper house, then that these things can communicate better with each other. So I might have my Juniper firewall can communicate with, say, my Juniper switches. Uh, I think there's a new um, network protocol which allows them to do that. So if they detect something that's wrong, they instantly block the switches as well. Yeah, they're working on, uh, on more of an ecosystem within their, their platform so that they can do cooperative enforcement, I think, mm -hmm. I think was one of the terms that was described as. That also is giving them the, the synergy in their staff where you're no longer going to have to learn different operating systems to do different platforms. You'll have one set of commands that will work 
across your platform. So your firewall, router, and switch commands are going to be unified into one set now. I, th I think they were working with an Nmap pro protocol. I don't know if you know anything about Nmap. But I don't know that. Yeah. But... Uh, and how, how is Cisco uh, doing? So Cisco's had a suite of security products over the years, right? Um, they've been phasing out the picks for the ASA, and the, in their switches, they run blades and the firewall switch modules. They're, um, I think they're the largest switch and, and routing vendor still by market share, but um, in the security space, I guess it must be changed much. Yeah, it must be hard being one of the, the largest players because you've got all these smaller companies with their innovations nipping at your heels and, and, and threatening exactly. to, to, to take uh, you know five percent of your market share here, ten percent. Smaller companies also always have that ability to be much more nimble and react to customers. And Cisco's a very large company with uh, um, one of the other ones is uh, as you get larger, you have legacy equipment and you have lots of customers on legacy equipment. You can't just cut those out of your config design. So you end up having to build larger software products to support the legacy and the new. And, and WatchGuard, you haven't mentioned WatchGuard. I don't know as much about WatchGuard. Yeah, because to be you know, they took some, some share market share from, from Cisco just because they put the GUI in, you know, on configuring their firewalls. I did, uh, I have seen them more at, at the shows and um, it's one of the companies we, we don't support yet so I haven't done as much research on them uh, though I've, I've talked to several of the, the WatchGuard people and they keep coming by talking to us. Um, it would be interesting to see, I think they're, I think like Fortinet, I think they're they're coming out of that SMB market and, and into the enterprise market in a hurry. When year. you say SMB? It's the small, mid-sized business. All right. So I think SMB. Uh, yes, in the, in the UK we call them small, medium enterprises. Right. SME, so. so SMB, small, medium business. Okay. So yeah, SMB, SMB. As opposed to server message blocks. Of course. Right, not server <laughs> message blocks. Uh, you know, same language, but we speak it different on both sides of the, of the ocean, right? Sure, sure. So, so if you if you were to say if you were to put money on it, who who do you think this year this year's firewall is going to or, or company is going to make double or triple in size or, or, or have the, the most growth? Wow, it's probably hard, but I think I think this year will be the year Palo Alto will make large gains in the market. They've they've um, they've added a lot to the product and, and gotten a lot of traction since the young player. They'll they'll definitely make make a lot of press this year in their growth. Um, Michael, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Ben.